In this video series looking at the home studio essential skills, we're going to start with some hints and tips on getting great pictures with bare flash. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And in this video, we're going to have a look at home studio essentials, beginning with the most basic sort of lighting you can get. One flash, just a, a bare speed light, one camera, one model. Let's see what amazing pictures we can take. So for our first setup, we need a model, and I've got one, here we go. This is the lovely Freya, she's gonna be modeling for us today. And we're gonna start with about as basic as it gets, one flash just pointing straight at the subject. First thing I need to do is figure out the exposure. So I'm using my little flash meter here, and I'm just gonna pop this underneath your chin, pointing back at the flash. And that tells me a flash exposure of F10. Now we could tweak the lights to get an exposure that is higher or lower, but F10, that's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna choose F10, I'm on 160th of a second shutter speed, ISO 100, let's take a shot. Okay, here we go. And just turn your shoulders a little towards the light for me and look back at me, perfect. Okay, so we get a picture that is correctly exposed, but that shadow, the shadow in the background is very unflattering. You see, these bare flashes produce what's known as hard light. And you can see that by seeing the shadow behind that has a very defined edge. Now we can do much better than this, and it's really simple. All we need to do is stop pointing the flash directly at Freya and point it at the roof. We've got a lovely white roof here and it's not very high being a home studio. So I can bounce the light directly off the roof. Okay, so let's just pop this underneath and take a meter reading. And I'm getting a meter reading of f4.5. I'd like it to be a little bit more than that, so let's just increase the power of my flash, and I can do that remotely here. So let's go for around about a stop more or thereabouts. And we'll take a test picture, and I'm up to f8. So that's a perfect exposure. Let's change f8 and take the shot. Okay, here we go. And this time I've got a lovely, lovely soft lighting. There's no more nasty shadow, it's gone completely. Now we can do better than that by rather than bouncing off the, the, the ceiling or the roof, we can bounce off a wall. We've got some really white walls here and these will become reflectors. All I need to do, angle my flash back down, let's point it over to the side and point it towards the white wall. And we're gonna just bounce it off the wall. Now we need to take another meter reading because once again, we've moved the, 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 the light. So let's do that. And again, I'm gonna point the flash meter towards the source of light, not the flash itself. The source of light is now the wall. Okay, so we'll pop that in there. There we go. And in fact, it's exactly the same, F8. So we can take the shot. Here we go. Uh, this time, Fred, if you can just turn towards the wall a little bit, that's it, and then back towards me. Wonderful, here we go. Okay, and that gives us a lovely soft lighting on the face. There's a lit side and a shady side, and there's also a bright and dark area on the background, which gives a beautiful graduation. Really simple, but really effective. We can do even more with one bare flash than that, so let's do another setup and see what else we can come up with. So for our second setup, we've changed things ever so slightly. Not much, but you'll see a massive difference. I put the light over to the side, and I'm gonna light Freya with what's known as the thin side of the light. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain and much easier to show you. Now I've already metered this out, and I know that it's F8 for the distance between the, the flash and the subject on this flash power. So I know that, I'm ready to take the shot. Let's do the shoot. Okay, Freya, what I'd like to do is just look over to the, the black there. And we'll come and take the picture, here we go. Now when I do that, uh, I get a, a nicely exposed face, but that background, it's gone completely black. And that's because the, the speed light, the flash, whatever you're using, it's pointing at the subject. It's not pointing at the background. So very little light hits the background and there's almost no exposure there at all. So what if you don't want a black background, but you actually want some detail in there? Well, you can do that really easy. All you need to do is ask your model to get closer to the background. 
So Freya, if you'd like to go and stand right up against the background. Now, because Freya's moved, I need to move my light so it still looks basically the same. And I just grab my light and move it up against the background. There we go. And we'll make sure it's pointing in the right direction. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Okay, so the light's moved, but the distance between the light and the subject, that's still basically exactly the same. So my exposure is exactly the same, still F8. Okay, let's take the shot. So again, if you can look just past the light for me, don't look at the light because it can be quite uncomfy. Okay, and this time we get a great shot. Let's do that again. We'll go for a close up as well. Where we have lovely lighting on Freya's face, but the only thing that concerns me now is the background. It's a little bit too bright for my personal taste. In fact, I think it's almost as bright as the face. So I want it not black, but not that bright either. I want a background somewhere in the middle. How do we do that? Well, we get our subject to stand somewhere in the middle. So Freya, if you want to just come and stand roughly in the center for me, that's perfect. Again, I've moved the model, I need to move the light. But once again, because I'm moving the light, but keeping the distance between the light and the model basically the same, I don't need to change my exposure. Okay, so we'll go again. So again, just look past the light for me. Brilliant, here we go. And this time we've got a great shot. We've got something in the background. It's not black but it's not overpoweringly bright either. But we still have that nice thin edge of light that's lighting our model. Now that's the basic idea. And what I'm gonna do now is take that basic idea and just push it a little bit further by doing a mini studio session. So we're gonna change things around a little bit here, but we're gonna keep the lighting basically the same. And let's see what amazing pictures we can come up with. Okay, let's do it. So there we go, that was a really great fun shoot. Did you enjoy that? Brilliant, and the results are very dramatic. And that's the thing, when you have a, a light with no modifiers, you get dramatic light. Now what we want you to do is to have a go. Don't just watch the video, try it yourself. And we've made a special gallery where you can share your shots. You'll find the link below. Now all I need to do is to get my favorite picture into Photoshop and we'll do a little bit of a Photoshop edit right now. So I've already done a little bit of a basic edit inside of Camera Raw, but there's two standout looks of this image that I want to show you. The first one is the toning, and the second one, a little bit less obvious, it is the cropping, or at least the extended size of the background. We'll come to that in a minute. Let's start with the toning. So inside of Adobe Camera Raw, I'm gonna find the split toning option, and then I'm gonna target just the shadows, because it is a mostly a low key image. And I'll start with the saturation. And it's an odd thing to begin with, but you have to start with some saturation before you see any changes to the hue slider. And I wanna go with a sort of a greeny, maybe bluey type color. So we're gonna go somewhere about the middle 185s, somewhere in that area. Now that affects the whole picture. And I'd actually like some of the original warmer color to return to Freya's face. So let's choose the adjustment brush and I'll increase the color temperature a little bit. And maybe whilst I'm here, I'll pull back the clarity so it's not quite so gritty and contrasty on her face because that's the sort of thing you get from a, a hard single light source and something like that. Maybe we'll just put a little bit of tint in there as well just to balance everything up. Okay, so that works quite well. If you spill over the edges, just grab the erase option and with a small hard brush, you can just erase back to tidy that up. Right, let's click on the open button and we'll open that back into Photoshop. Now there's a couple of other areas to fix here where we've got my assistant's arms. So let's go grab the, the patch tool and I'll carefully draw, well not carefully, I'll roughly draw around the arms and we'll go find an area to patch that with, something like that. 
And then we've got a hairdryer here to put some movement the other side of the hair. And again, we'll, we'll go patch that there. And of course, we can't forget the, the cord for the hairdryer as well. So let's lose the selection and we'll just go in very quickly draw over the cord as well, just to tidy things up. And again, small studios, these things tend to happen. But perhaps the biggest problem with a small studio is the size of your background that you can use. In this case, I'm limited to about two and a half meters in length. And what I'd really like is the impression of a really huge background, or at least bigger than I've got in reality. And to do it, we'll use a little Photoshop trick. So first thing, I'm going to make a copy of this image by going to Layer and Duplicate Layer. And that does a couple of things. It unlocks the background, at least it gives me a background copy, but it also gives me a return to the original should I need it. Next thing to do is to get the Crop Tool. And I'm going to increase my canvas size simply by dragging out a crop either side. And that's the kind of dimensions of the picture I want to go for, almost a, a widescreen feel. And then click on the tip. Finally, we need to stretch this out, but we've got to make sure we don't change our little model here. So to do that, Photoshop has a great feature, and you'll find it under Edit, Content Aware Scale. Now there is a little sign here, a little sort of person figure. Click on that, and that will make sure that you don't affect your model's shape. But you can now stretch out the background, and you'll see you stretch the background out to give your studio a much larger size than it is in reality. Click on the tick, and that'll render that up really nicely. OK, so there we go. There's my final image with its supersized background and wonderful toning. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more from myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to be clicking on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.